As promised, joining me now, Oscar-winning documentary filmmaker, author, and activist, the one and only Michael Moore. Good to see you again. It's good to see you here on Casual Friday. Is it Casual Friday? <laughs> you decide. It's Fallback they were, Friday. They were trying to put makeup on me out there. I said, I, you know, there's nothing you can fix here. <laughs> it's, it's Casual Makeup Friday for me. Well, so. they say if it ain't broke... Well, that's the other way to look at it. Yes, uh, a better, a better uh, self-esteem would help um, on some level. We just watched that accounting we put together. People have yeah. seen bits of that. To see it all together is quite striking. Could you write a story like this? And what does it mean when the protagonists start to come out and say, we did it, we do crimes, get over it? Yes, um, listen, this, I don't wanna, we have to take this seriously. Yes. It is obviously a, uh, a rolling thunder review of comedy going on uh, in the White House. Mm. Nonetheless, um, they're still in charge. Every day, their EPA is getting rid of regulations to protect us. Their Interior Department is selling off our public lands to the oil and gas companies, et cetera, et cetera. So the real things are happening while we're all, you know, sure. baffled by this, uh, this, um, implosion uh, that seems to, to be taking place. And um, so on one hand, uh, it's good to laugh. On the other hand, um, we need to act as quick as possible and uh, we're all gonna be okay if that happens. I do believe that. You've talked a lot about how regular people who aren't politically obsessed the way some of us might be, or news obsessed. Yes hear about stuff, learn about stuff, and you're uniquely, I, I would argue, qualified for that when you look at how you've dealt with jobs in the manufacturing crisis, guns, which I'm gonna get to, the Iraq war. You've looked a lot at how people come to understand the stories and how to change minds. I wonder if what we saw from Mr. Mulvaney, whatever reason he did it, um, in your view, is one of these inflection points that could change minds. We'll take another look, Michael, at more of this, because I think it's still just sinking in in this busy time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Mulvaney coming out to the podium, and pressed on the specifics of whether this was an attempt right. to get a foreign country to do it, tied to extorting a bribe around money, and he says yes, take a look. Did he also mention to me in the past that the, 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 the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely, no question about that. Um, but that's it, and that's why we held up the money. The look back to what happened in 2016 certainly was, was part of the thing that he was worried about in corruption with that nation, and that is absolutely appropriate. the funding. Yeah. What you just described is a quid pro quo. We do that all the time with foreign policy. I have news for everybody. Get over it. Uh, this man obviously is going to be admitted into heaven. Um, he, you know, he <laughs> told the truth. <laughs> I mean, you okay. have to appreciate it on that level. Are you calling Mick Mulvaney an angel? I'm, no, no. The angels are already in heaven. You're right. In order to get through the pearly gates. I gotta days. tell you something. I don't know if you know this about my background. I'm not really up to speed on the whole heaven thing. Yeah, no, this is one of the great things about your <laughs> religion, if I may compliment this. What are, isn't there like a third holiday or holy day we're in right now? But basically, um, the idea that there is no hell um, is brilliant. Okay, but you say that because- All of us who had to believe in that but you're a, not a Trump. We had a difficult a, adolescence. You're not a I'm Trump saying. fan, but you are very positive on Mick Mulvaney, as you put it. You think he told the truth. Yeah, he came right out there. You know, I, I, all I can say, again, if, this, if there was a movie version of this, somebody stuck him with a needle just before he walked out uh, onto the stage there, a well, truth serum needle. And, and he just went on and on saying, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, of course. Of course, essentially admitting there is a quid pro quo. In fact, there's many quid pro quos. We do this all the time. And, and then admonishing us in, 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 in good Catholic school fashion, get over it. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm over it. I believe you. I believe that you, the president, and whoever else was on that phone call participated in a high crime the likes of which I never studied in school, nor have I lived through. And we have lived through some presidents that I didn't particularly care for, but they didn't do this. And I think that um, I'm just, I'm surprised, I gotta tell you, it's been like three weeks now through, since Trump essentially first admitted it, um, that he's still there. It's, it, it, 
I don't know many you, people. You, you're saying if you think someone, say, like President Obama did this, orchestrated it, and admitted it, you think the wheels would move way faster. And not only that, President Obama, being a man of conscience, would have had to say, you know, I screwed up in a big way. I put my personal self-interest ahead of the country. I put the interests of, of this other country run by a, a totalitarian leader ahead of our interests. And so I will have to resign. Um, decent people throughout history have done that. That, of course, isn't going to happen here. But it, it, I just think it's, um, it's amazing to me. And, I, and, you know, I have to say, can I just say a word of, of uh, Nancy Pelosi has actually done a brilliant job. And I see now that she's trying to extend this. Do you ever watch uh, uh, Wheel of Fortune? And, you know, sure. you, they ask for, uh, 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 is there a T? Is there an L? And, they, and, and all of a sudden, the phrase is up there. You can see it. Everybody can see what it is. There's still like four or five letters. They don't just call it. They want to squeeze it out. They want to extend it a little bit longer to try and get a little more till they say every last letter. That's it looks like what's going drawing on. Drawing this out as she tangles with the president. She is drawing this out to get that last W, that last Z, whatever it is, because it's clear, clear to all of us now that, Ari, there is more. There's more. There's in that. more. Well, if There's I can more extend, in that server. If I can ex- put more in that server. If I can extend your analogy, um, Speaker Pelosi doesn't have to buy a vowel because Mick Mulvaney just gave it to her for free. Yes, and he has also just spun the wheel, and it's hit, it hit bankrupt. Wait, what did it hit? it hit? Well, it was going between lose a turn and bankrupt. Do now people, we're going to get to monopoly because I think it hit uh, go directly to jail. Do not pass do go. People watching this right now think less of us that we know Wheel of Fortune that well. <laughs> I don't know what people think. Let me play, since you're shouting her out, let me play a little bit of Speaker Pelosi because she's been pressed on the timeline before. Yes. And she has okay. talked about okay. this because she's tangling with Mitch McConnell, who now says if, if they send it to him, he wants to do a trial by Christmas. Uh, All right. Speaker Pelosi, take All a right, look. Here we go. I have no idea. I have no idea. The, the, the path, the timeline will depend on the truth line. And that's what we're looking for. This is where you come in, because I will tell you this. Yeah. A trial is always a story. Mm-hmm. You don't go into every single incriminating thing about the person. You figure out how to explain clearly yes. to the jury. Yes. Here, we, the jury is the Senate. But the senators have constituents, which makes it different than every other trial. Do you think that Speaker Pelosi and the Democrats have more they need to add to this story at this point or not? Yes and no. They have more that's going to come out in the same storyline, similar to what happened with Ukraine. She's right. We don't need now to throw the 57 articles of impeachment up against Trump for the 157 things he did in these last three years. That would be crazy time. They're they're very right to focus on this one thing. My feeling is is that there is more there uh, than has come out. And I think even just even just this week with the people that have been testifying yeah. and what we sort of know what they've said, we've learned new things even this week that only put the nail in the coffin deeper. I I, I really like listening to you. I think it's really interesting the way you the, just the way you talk and think. We've talked about Trump. A lot of people interested in this next uh, campaign. Have you decided who you're backing in the Democratic primary? Yes, I've decided, and I'm going to show up publicly tomorrow at Bernie at the Bernie's back rally uh, near the Queensboro Bridge here in New York. You're endorsing Bernie, and Sanders. I'm endorsing Bernie Sanders. Yes. Let me put the question like this, because people who know you well yes. know your politics. Yes. I don't think you were looking equally at everyone in the field, but briefly, why Bernie Sanders? over Elizabeth Warren, because they both speak to issues you've worked on. Well, first of all, I endorsed Bernie 30 years ago when he first ran for Congress. I went up to Burlington, Vermont, appeared at a rally. Um, you know, I was, it was the first time he ran, I was probably as good as I could get. You know, I mean, they, they, <laughs> it was like, it was just a few months after my first film, and I flew up there, and uh, he basically he had, he had three, you know, endorsers of, like, some note, uh, two guys, uh, that made ice cream uh, for a living, uh, Ben and Jerry. And uh, as I said at the time, and one guy who ate ice cream, uh, <laughs> me. So it was, it was the three of us. But why not Warren? Bernie. 
Well, listen, I love Elizabeth Warren. Frankly, I'm, I'm I believe, the first person that ever put her in front of a camera. Uh, she's been in two of my movies. Uh, I f first met her back around 2005 and I uh, thought that, that this woman uh, needs to be running this country. I thought that way. But back not then. now. Well, I think, listen, I, there's a lot of people. It's like you, you, people are for Elizabeth, people are for Bernie. Why me for Bernie? Because Bernie um, understands that capitalism and the, and the greedy form of capitalism, especially that we have now, is at the core of so many of the problems that we're talking about. And he's not afraid to come out and just say that, that that's the problem. And you think he's in a position to win the nomination and be president? Oh, Trump. absolutely. I mean, there was a, the Emerson poll in Iowa yesterday uh, showed a head to head with Bernie Biden and, uh, and Elizabeth. Only one of them uh, came out ahead of Trump, and that was Bernie Sanders. Well, look, so I'm only, he's absolutely, absolutely can win this. I don't, I think I appreciate people- in you, the, I appreciate you breaking this news on the beat. I'm only yeah. retaking the mic uh, to get to the other thing that yeah, was, sure, is so sure, important. Sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, but, and let me tell folks about, about where we're at. Murder and suicide by gunfire, as we all know, are just a part of our daily life in America. We tend to remember and sometimes cover the most horrific mass shootings, consider the nine gunned down in Ohio, 22 killed in El Paso. But take a look at what's happened in just the 75 days since those attacks. 112 more mass shootings. That's when four more people are killed. And this year, over 400 mass shootings. That's more than one a day. Uh, and it's part of why, as I mentioned on, on a serious policy note, uh, Michael Moore's on the beat and you're here tonight and that's because MSNBC has partnered with you to air your documentary on this Bowling for Columbine. Let's take a short look at that right now. This is an American tradition. It's an American responsibility to be armed. If you're not armed, you're not responsible. Right. Who's going to defend your kids? The cops? Me. The federal government? No, yeah. none of them. It's your job to defend you, you and yours. If you don't do it, you're in dereliction of duty as an American, period. You go out there, you talk to people, you take them seriously. Uh, how does that film apply now? The sad thing uh, is that this film which I made 17 years ago, could have been made this week. I mean, it is, it is maybe the most relevant of my films in the sense that nothing has really changed. In fact, it got worse. I thought when, the, when we made the film, this, you know, Columbine had been the first like big mass school, school shooting in, in the modern era. And we thought, we've got to make this movie. And in making it, we will put an end to this. There will not be another one. Mm -hmm. And in our grandiose way of thinking that film matters, which we believe. Um, of course, as you pointed out now, there is more than one a day where four or more people are shot. And um, it hasn't gotten better. It's gotten much worse. And, uh, you know, I'm so grateful that MSNBC contacted me after El Paso and Dayton and said, we need to show this. And I said, you know, I don't think this film, even though it won the Oscar, even though it's 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 been on premium cable, but it's never really been on free cable. Yeah, anyone can Basically. just watch it on Saturday. Anybody can watch it for free this Saturday night. I'm grateful for you hosting the evening. Uh, you and I are going to speak after the film uh, about, about the movie. And I think what I do in this film is present some ideas that don't get discussed mm. as to why we have the problem and perhaps how we can fix it. And I, I want to put up the number of guns because you explore that in here. Yes. So much of this becomes binary. It's like these legal debates of, oh, do you have the, oh, look how yeah. excited I am. Do no. you have the if right? If that's all your weapon is, I'm safe. <laughs> okay. Do you have the right or not? What does the Second Amendment say? And that's part of it. But there's a bigger thing. If we, if we look at this, that we have 390 million guns inside the United States. Correct. Now, many of them are and will remain legal. What you explore is not, okay, that only. But what does it mean to have more guns than people? And how easy does that make it to kill yourself or others? All of that. First of all, we have a rising suicide rate. And using um, uh, uh, guns is now one of the most successful ways, sadly, to put it that way, of people killing themselves. But Ari, of that 190 million, and that, maybe this is a piece, this is the good news, bad news. 78% mm -hmm. of our fellow Americans do not own a gun. Right. We are not a nation of gun nuts. But according to the Washington Post, 3% of the people who own guns own almost 200 million 
of those 390 million guns. Just 3% of right, the Which is a lot of guns kicking They have around. built a stockpile in their homes, in their garages, in their bunkers. And this is a serious, serious problem. So gun control is a, is a big part of how to fix this. Obviously, less guns, less murder. But we show in the film that countries that have a significant number of guns don't kill each other the way we kill each other. Yeah. Why is it we, why us as Americans? The film gets into this. And I basically end up agreeing halfway with the NRA when they say guns don't kill people, people kill yeah. people. The movie says guns don't kill people. Americans kill people because well, so, we're the rare country. Yeah, I'm so glad this. you said that. And, and as you mentioned, we're going to get into it, because what you're saying is, you know, some people have ideas about you and they imagine this film might be some sort of narrow, quote unquote, left wing diatribe. It's not. There are things in this film that I think would upset people in all sorts of ways. Some of it we need to be upset, is your argument in the film. Um, but as you say, it's both guns and then also trying to understand the way people are using them in America, which is why it's so important. I want to thank you for coming on The Beat, and I want to tell everyone exactly what you need to know. Tomorrow night, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, we're hosting this special. You will be able to see, as mentioned, the entire Bowling for Columbine documentary as it holds up, 9 p.m. Eastern. And afterward, this new interview, longer, totally separate from what we just did, with Michael Moore, the film America's Gun Violence Epidemic. And if you want what some people say you can do about it. Very special MSNBC project. I'm thrilled to play a role in it. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.